2019 Alfa Romeo uh, Q4, and I can't even pronounce the, the last name of it, S-T-E-L-V-L-O, or something like Estelvelvio, or something like that. Never mind, I'm not going to even make an attempt to try to pronounce that name until somebody does it for me. Um, okay, so let's look at this. What do we have here? We have the liquid line going right, right to this block. We have the suction line going right to this pipe that go right to this block. So you have a liquid and you have a suction, but when you see coming out the other end, you don't see no more liquid line. So all you old guys who've seen my videos or have studied a little bit, you know where the liquid line went. It doesn't go through. The liquid line is actually ported through here. And if you notice, this is extra large uh, piping here. So you have a whole bunch of refrigerant paths with tubes, fins. On the inside of this big pipe, there's another pipe. That's the suction line right down here on the inside. And all the hot liquid refrigerant passes on the outside of the suction line that is cold, transferring the heat energy out of the liquid so it has more BTU per pound available when it gets delivered to the expansion valve. This is their way of raising the efficiency of the system, especially since they use YF refrigerant that is even a little bit less efficient than the R134. And we're using smaller quantities. If you look at the charge quantity, we're just over a pound, 500 and some grams. Where's our sticker at? Right here. 535 grams is uh, the charge capacity of this, of YF refrigerant. So that's roughly, uh, I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm guesstimating right now, um, $280 in refrigerant, just the refrigerant. And if we look at this small high efficiency compressor, we have a clutch. It does have a clutch, a mechanical clutch on it. And if you look at the size of it, well, other than the front head, so you have the front head up here that's about three quarters of an inch, 19 millimeters in the front. That's actually not the compressor itself. You know, that's just the front head that holds the bearing and everything else up in the front. And then the rear head of the compressor that's back here, that's just a cavity for the bearing support for the shaft that goes through and for a place for the suction and high pressure, high temperature discharge line. It's actually not part of the compressor, but the compressor falls in between. Let's see if I could focus. Okay. The compressor falls just where you see this, this plastic line right here, this wiring harness. There's a little seam, a little line. That's where the compressor actually starts, the mechanics that hold where the pistons are and everything. From that little line on the casting, because those are two parts, this part is separate from that part held together by bolts. And if you come back here, you can see the metal plate casting right there, the little dark line. So the compressor, basically, if you look at my fist from the beginning of my knuckle to the back of my knuckle, that is the actual width of the compressor. It's a tiny little thing. And they spin the hell out of those things to uh, make them work efficiently. And they are much more efficient than compressors in the past. And we keep getting these smaller and smaller compressors with smaller refrigerant charges and even with less efficient refrigerant due to all these modifications we're making with like uh, internal heat exchangers, higher efficiency microchannel condensers and higher efficiency microchannel evaporators, we can continuously keep reducing the amount of refrigerant charge needed to pull off, cool off something like this as a SUV or a, a station wagon. It has a big interior and it's a dark car. And it has the capability with a small system to do all that work to remove the heat out of there. Now we can one up this one bit better and we can use hydrocarbon gas. And instead of needing 535 grams, I'm willing to bet you if I would substitute uh, hydrocarbon gas in here, like a R600, I could probably use about 90 grams, 90 to 120 grams 
would probably replace 535 grams of this refrigerant using hydrocarbon. And uh, that's how much more efficient hydrocarbon refrigerant is, the flammable refrigerant, if you guys all want to know, uh, over using the refrigerant that we're using right now. Uh, here's a nice old beauty, an old T-Bird with a old, I'm not even sure what the name of this. This is a very mechanical uh, turbo charger, uh, not turbo, supercharger, and because it's not off the exhaust. It just runs off of a regular old belt. Like if you had air conditioning right here, you take off the air conditioning pump and you put on a supercharger, only a few PSI of boost going right down on top of a carburetor. Here's your air ducting. And then there's a filter housing. You could barely see down there. You see that round hole? And you see the other round hole and going around it? That's your air filter. And so this is the air delivery system to this old, uh, you used to have an old York or Tecumseh uh, air compressor right here. Just remove that, put this on there, boom, you got more horsepower. Well, you have to tweak, since you deliver more air, it would be too lean and you'd burn the valves if you just slapped on. So you have to enrich in your fuel delivery. So you have to open up your ports and your metering for more fuel delivery to comp compensate for more air delivery so you could keep your fuel to air ratio correct and um, that's a very very simple cheap basic way of getting a little bit more horsepower of course it's nicer with putting in injectors and being able to dial in your pulse rate to your injectors for full fuel delivery based on load and rpm and you can dial in your timing curve and your dwell and uh but now you're getting into computers simple old basic look at the old style uh battery it looks like an original you know it's a new one but they did the old style where it looks like you have the plastic plates and you would par back in the old days they would pour tar you know like tar that goes on your roof they used to pour tar in the tops of old batteries that's how they used to be made on the handmade batteries all right i'll catch you guys later